In this video, I'll show you how you can take a Godot project, whose repository you have on GitHub, and have the project automatically deploy its web version to GitHub pages. This is my first video using Godot Engine, but I've been studying this engine for several months now, and I quite like it. In fact, my fall semester game programming course is using Godot Engine, and you can find almost all the course resources available for free online here. I've also been using Godot Engine with my family for our monthly Fam Jam series. In the morning, we take one of my younger boys and put them in charge of the project, and then the whole family works together to make a playable game. And in fact, this shows an example of what I'm going to teach you how to do today, which is have your repositories on GitHub and have the playable version automatically hosted on GitHub pages. I'm going to start with a completely empty project, so let's go ahead and get that started. I'm going to start by making a folder that will hold my project. And I'll go into that folder. Now I'll run Godot Engine. And from here we'll say we want a new project. I can find that folder I just made. Now a lot of times people will create their projects right in this folder, but I'm actually going to put the Godot Engine project in a subfolder of this folder, which allows me to use the top level folder for other organizational purposes. So I'll click the Create Folder button, and I'll make one called Project. And that will be where the Godot Engine code will be. Let's give this a good name. Make sure we select OpenGL ES2 for the best support of the HTML export. All right, let's go ahead and make a really minimal project out of this. I'm going to create a new user interface node, and I'll call this the main UI. Let's give this a child, which is a label. And we'll just put the classic hello world message here. And uh, we'll center that on the screen. Good. So I'll use Control S to save this. And having done several Godot Engine projects now, I've come to really appreciate some of the advice you can find online about best practices. And I'll include links to those in the video description. Suffice it to say, I'm not going to put this at the top level. I'm going to create a folder called Source. And in there, I'll put this scene file. Good. So to make sure we have all of our pieces in order while we have Godot Engine open, let's go ahead and go to the Project Settings. And under Run, make sure we have that scene selected as our main scene. Now we also want to configure this to allow for HTML5 export. So I'm going to go to the Project menu and choose Export. I'll choose Add and HTML5. Now, the first time you do this, you might have some uh, downloads you have to do to get the templates. Uh, obviously, I've done this before, so I don't get those prompts. Uh, and here, on the Export Path, I will click that button to bring up the Explorer here. And what I'm going to do now is, uh, you'll see the benefit of this folder structure. I'm going to go up one level. I don't actually want to build the project within the Godot project. I'm going to build it off of this top level folder. So here, I'll create a folder called Build. Inside of there, I'll create another folder called Web, in case I ever want to make uh, other builds, like a Windows build or a Linux build. Um, this allows me to have that freedom. And inside of that folder, I'll make my index.html file. Good. And this is what I wanted to see on the export path is dot dot slash build slash web slash index.html. Note that uh, you couldn't just type in that path there because those folders wouldn't exist and the build process might panic. Uh, so better to do it using the steps that I showed you. I don't actually need to export it now, so I'll just go ahead and close that, make sure this is saved, and that should be all set. OK, let's go back to the shell. One of the things I want to make sure I have is a good git ignore file. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, pop open an editor. And the things that I want to ignore for sure are the build directory. And inside the project directory, there's a hidden folder called .import, uh, which is not needed for the project to work. And you just end up with a lot of uh, generated binary cruft in your repository. So we don't want that. Now, because I'm on Linux using Emacs, I'm also going to ignore all the Emacs backup files. And I'm using KDE, so I'm going to go ahead and ignore my .directory uh, files. But again, those, those would depend on your operating system, right? Depending on if you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, and what desktop environment you're using, you may have some other pieces in there. The crucial ones really are the build and the project that import. Okay, that's good. Um, so let me introduce the piece that makes this all work, and that is GitHub Actions and GitHub Workflows. So 
I have over here a sample GitHub workflow file that I'm going to stick into my project. Now there's a lot of stuff going on here and uh, I will provide a, a link to a gist for this so that you can go ahead and grab it. And in fact I have some blog posts about it as well that I'll link to in the video description. Um, but just to give you a, a bird's eye view on it, this is a YAML file. YAML is a markup language. It happens to be my favorite markup language. Um, and it specifies how this deploy action can run. And what this deploy action does is uh, check out the project grab the HTML5 templates, build the project. I have an optional step in here that I recommend, which is to compress the project, because by default the HTML5 builds are pretty large, but they're easily compressible using some of these tricks. So uh, go ahead and check that out. And again, I have some blog posts about it. Check the video description for links. Uh, and then uh, this last piece is using the GH Pages action from PCIRIS. We can actually push it to GitHub Pages. Okay, so let's go ahead and just grab this whole thing. And I'm going to put it in my project. I'll make a directory called .github. And in there, I'll make a folder called workflows. And I'll go ahead and paste this file in there. Uh, I'll call it um, godotci.yml, although the name doesn't really matter. Whoops, I got my shell command wrong there. There, this will just take whatever I give to standard input and pipe it into that file. Good. Okay, so from here I will initialize a git repository. I can say git status to see what's currently being tracked. I can use git add dash capital A to add everything. Now, of course, uh, there are uh, graphical editors that you can use to manipulate git, but I think learning the command line is really important, as I've, I've talked about in many other videos. Uh, so again, git status shows us, uh, well, the current status. We see all of these files are ready to be committed, they're staged. And what we see here is the, the workflow specification, the git ignore file, and the project itself. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and commit those with the conventional name initial commit. Okay, so now we need to push all these things out to GitHub. So let's go ahead and make that repository on GitHub. I'm going to make a new repository, and I'll call it Godot example. And from here, I can set this as the remote origin, and then I can push to it. Of course, that pushes everything out to GitHub, so if I refresh this page, I now see my code. Let's go to the Actions tab. Here, we can see that we have specified a workflow called Publish to GitHub Pages. That workflow has not yet been run. This is a quirk of the way that the deployment script works. The first time it comes in, it won't actually activate. We have to do this manual step once. Let's go ahead and try it. Run Workflow run workflow. Now a quirk of the UI here is that it looks like it's still not running, but in fact it is. Let's refresh the page and see. Now we can see that this workflow is running. In fact, you can even watch it run. We can see all of the steps that are specified in the YAML file and watch as the virtual machine runs through this. Okay, that workflow is complete. One of the things that it did was it created a new branch in the repository called GH Pages, and I can see that if I browse the code. See, here's that new branch that it made, and that's the branch that we want to host on GitHub Pages. We need to go to the settings and tell it that. Here we are. Save that option and now scroll back down to that section and it shows us the URL for our project. Let's go ahead and click that. Now it takes a little while for the information you set in the web version to actually get hosted. So if you get a 404, just wait a minute and then reload the page. Sometimes it can take a couple minutes to update, but sometimes it also just doesn't quite work right, which of course would happen while you're recording a video. But I found that a good way to get around that is if you go back to your settings, 
just toggle these options. Then it seems to catch up. There it is. So that's the web build of our Godot project. Now, that first time we do it, we have to take those manual steps, but every time after that, it should go automatically. Let's take a look at how that goes. Back in Godot Engine, I'll just edit this label. And save the scene. And go back to the shell. You can see that's the only file that I've changed. I'll commit that change locally, and then push that change out to GitHub. So from here, let's take a look at actions, and we can see the commit that was pushed that has triggered this new action to run. And again, if you want to watch it, you certainly can. I'll speed up the video again here so I don't have to sit through it. Okay, so once again, this has pushed the changes to GitHub pages. And uh, of course, if we bookmark that link, we wouldn't have to go back here, but we know right where it is. Now, if you get the old version, like we're seeing here, that could be because of a couple different reasons. One might be that uh, this version is cached in your browser. It also might be that the new version just hasn't deployed on the server yet. But you can always hold down shift and refresh the page to get the most recent version. And there it is, that's the new one. I hope you found that useful. This is something I like to set up very early in a project lifetime. That way, as I'm working on it, or if my family's working on it, or my team is working on it, we can always see the latest version. Of course, it might be a little dangerous if everybody's pushing to master and you have a live version online, but for little hobby projects, it's certainly an easy and affordable way to get continuous integration working. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you in the next video.